Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at geometry nodes and producing a big like building, which is tessellated with different parts to step over one another within Blender. It's a fairly straightforward process and it requires a little bit of regular modifiers with geometry nodes as a modifier to get it working. But once you get it started, it's fairly easy to manipulate and create really interesting geometries really quickly. The file is available on Patreon, so make sure you take a look at it to start creating some cool buildings. Here we have the final output, and we have the intermediate steps to get to it as well. The cool thing is that this is our base mesh. If we go ahead and modify one element, you see that we have our remesh model, that's the intermediate step. And then based on the remesh faces, we just populate these with our blocks that we have created here. And we have two kinds of blocks at the moment. We have one it's picked up whenever we have a vertical face so completely vertical normal and then all the other faces get this kind of model here so let's take a look at how we can create that so our first plane is a very simple mesh we can go and we can create even more geometry subdivisions if we like to but i thought i would keep it rather simple with the idea that we have a strong angled face which would look really good once we have something tessellated the next step is to add a remesh modifier now the remesh modifier has a lot of different options. Uh, we want to use blocks and we want to change the oak tree depth to five. That basically makes the remesh elements a little bit smaller. It's important to keep our object scale one to one because our final blocks, they will essentially match the scale that we have of our model here of these blocks here, this oak tree depth. So what does that mean? So if we go to Octree Depth of 4, you see our blocks get larger. If we do it on this model here, and I change that, you see now we have some gaps because these don't scale up to whatever the size is. So they have been modeled to that size model. And in fact, even here, you can see that we're starting to get some funny gaps. And I think that has to do with the overall size of our model. So if I put stretch this back now, and it fits a little bit better. So the bounding size box is quite important to make this work well. Let's get into the geometry nodes part. So I'm going to duplicate this model. Let's create Alt D to have a linked duplicate once again. Change the octree depth to five. And in geometry nodes, we'll create a new geometry node. And the first thing we want to do is point instance. And if we click on one of these objects, that's the point instance that we get. So really straightforward and really simple. But if you notice here on the roof, it's full of trees, whereas here it's not. Now trees are representational just to show the different kinds of models. To split the areas like we have here in the normals, to split the areas, we're going to use the normals direction. So we want to do a couple of steps before the point instance. And in fact, we're going to have two point instances, one point instance for one object, and the other point instance for the other object. And we'll join the geometry together. So in here, what we want to do is separate our normals. So if we go to attribute, shift A attribute and attribute separate X, Y, Z, plug it in the geometry and we want to work with the normal. What that's doing is taking our normal, which is consisting of three directions and we have a result for the X, the Y, and the Z. Now, the only one we're worried about right now is the Z. So we can name this, we can create a new attribute and we'll call it nor Z. And the next thing that we wanna do is create a mathematical operation with that normal Z. So we'll create an attribute, add an attribute math. We'll change this to less than, and the, the both the inputs of A and B are going to be attributes or rather B is going to be a float. And for this one, we can say 0 0.01 and A is going to be normal Z. So the attribute that we've created and the result will be new normal. We can call it anything. I'll just call it new normal. So now we're gonna use this as a mask and that mask is gonna drive where we have one type of point instance and then the other type of point instance. So shift A point separate, plug this in for mask. Let's use new normal. And now you see we have geometry one is just the top one. So that's where our normal direction is less than 0 0.01. So let's play with this a little bit. So let's make it something larger 0 0.3. Now that stays fairly the same because that's the only part 
that's completely flat. Right? Everything else has a much larger normal direction. Next, we need to input this into geometry 2. And now we have the two different kinds of elements that are coming together. Now, in this case, what happened is that we have the trees only on the top and no trees everywhere else. But we can flip those. Let's switch these out. So geometry 1 goes to this and geometry 2 goes to there. And now we have the setup that's completely ready. And in fact, we can use different kinds of models. So I'm going to duplicate these and let's go ahead. And first, I'm going to make the bed higher, something like this. And then let's extrude these elements out. So Alt E extrude faces along normals. So we get something that looks like this. And let's see how that looks. So I'm going to select the second one. So we want to change this element here. And we want to pick this new object. And you can see now how these are starting to pop out. So he has a slightly different geometry, slightly modified geometry. And this one here doesn't have that, right? This one maintains the old geometry. And they're all again, once again, parametric. So we can go and adjust one and then all of them are going to adjust. It's a really easy way to have something that's fairly simple, fairly straightforward and make it a little bit more interesting by just tilting it a bit. It also helps with providing terraces for everybody and creating more sunlight. The reason why I like geometry nodes so much and why I'm actually starting to prefer it compared to Grasshopper and Rhino is because with geometry nodes, we can compare it with some of the other inherent procedural modeling tools that are available in Blender. For example, all the other modifiers. So a lot of the work that would require a lot of node trees for us to create that, we can just use it in a flow with other modifiers to get us to that result much quicker and much more fun. Now, the modifiers are going to get transferred over time to geometry nodes, but that would still hopefully mean that it's fairly easy and it should give us a little bit more procedural freedom of what goes where. If you want to learn how to use geometry nodes for an attractor based setup, I've recently released a Blender Architecture Masterclass in which we cover the complete steps for using Blender for architectural concept design. And one of the chapters deals exclusively with geometry nodes. Some of them are simple, like creating shrubs, but then we get into a slightly more advanced example of creating a brick wall based with an attractor. Thanks for watching and see you next time.